Number 5. Monumental grave markers were first introduced during the geometric period. They were large vases, often decorated with funerary representations. It was only in the archaic period that stone sculptures were used as funerary monuments. On this magnificent crater, the main scene occupies the widest portion of the vase and shows the deceased laid upon a bier surrounded by members of his household and at either side mourners. For optimal clarity, the dead man is shown on his side, and the checkered shroud that would normally cover the body has been raised and regularized into a long rectangle with two projections. The zone below shows a procession of chariots and foot soldiers. The figures may refer to the military exploits of the deceased, because hourglass shields and chariots played a more limited role at this time than in the earlier Bronze Age. The scene more likely evokes the glorious ancestry and traditions to which the dead man belonged. Number 4. The Ufalto's painter was trained in the black figure technique. It is interesting to compare the firm, deliberate incision in his works with the loser, freer line of artists like the Berlin painter. The foot race is one of the earliest known events in the Panathenaic Games. Number 3. Half man, half horse, the centaurs were thought to inhabit remote wooded areas. In much of Greek art, they appear in combat with humans and, by implication, are the antithesis of civilized men. The classic rendering of this subject can be seen in the meadows of the Parthenon in Athens. It is, however, already fully presented in this bronze statuette. The outcome of the conflict is indicated by the end of the spear preserved in the center's left flank and by the greater height of the man. Number 2. Around the lip, pygmies fighting cranes. Around the main surface of the handle, three satas, on the ends, Hermes and Perseus, on top, two tritons, both potter and painter. Mirchos was one of the great artists, active about 570 before Christ. His son, Telesson, was the major potter of Little Master, cups in the succeeding generation. Both were literate. They inscribed their vases. This Oribalos is exceptional for the precision and vigor of the figures. Number 1. Obverse, Hephaestos on Mule among Satas and Menads. Reverse, Dionysos among Satas and Menads. The symposium, conventionally interpreted as a drinking party, was a well established feature of Greek, particularly Athenian society. For over a century, representations on vases document that wine, women, and song were central ingredients. Even more worthy of emphasis, however, is the importance of the symposium as an institution that permitted citizens to gather, to transact business, and, as Plato's dialogue makes clear, to engage in serious discussion. An essential piece of equipment for the symposium was the vase in which the wine was diluted with water and from which it was served. In black figure vase painting before the last quarter of the 6th century before Christ, the decoration of large, elaborate craters tended to be mythological. On red figure vases, the symposium itself was often depicted. This crater is of exceptional significance because it is one of the first on which wine, women, and song are presented, albeit in a mythological guise. The subject, which encompasses both sides of the vase, is the return of Hephaestos to Mount Olympos, the home of the gods, Hephaestos, the divine smith, was the son of Hera and Zeus. Because he was born lame, his mother cast him out Olympos. In revenge, Hephaestos fashioned a throne that held Hera fast when she sat on it. Only Hephaestos could release her. Therefore, he was given wine and escorted to Olympos by Dionysos, the god of wine, accompanied by his male and female followers, the Satas and Menads, 